Hi, my name's Alison. Today we are going to be reading Hope, Where Are You? Hope, where are you? I miss everything about school, even the two-hour walk to get there. I spend my days helping my mother while my sisters play. Staying busy keeps my mind off my hunger. I listen to school lessons on the radio when my dad is not home. Today, I overheard my father saying that he might not let me go back to school. My older sister was married at 12. I'm just 11. I have dreams of becoming a teacher. I need to go back to school. I'm worried about my younger sister. I'm scared for myself. My teacher, Mina, comes to my house with two men I have never seen. They bring with them a box of food for our family. My mom takes me and my sister outside to get water. She says, let's stay out of here for a little while. They need to speak with your dad. The three spend a long time talking to my father. I wonder what they are talking about. Dad pulls me aside to tell me, I have decided that you will be returning to school, he continues. Can I see you teach some math to your sisters? I'm quite excited as I explain the wonders of numbers to my sisters. Even my mom and dad decided to participate. I believe I will become a teacher, finding that warm and fuzzy feeling inside. I eat my piece of chapati and dream about my future. Nakau, Oceana. We moved last weekend into a house in the country and I feel lonely. I love the city, the energy, the people, but now everything has suddenly shut down. I won't be able to go to school and make new friends. My older brother, Kari, is helping my parents unpack. I was done with my room pretty fast. I don't have much. We move quite often, wherever dad can find work. So I got rid of everything apart from my tools because I love to tinker and my rugby ball. In the backyard, all I see is rolling hills and moving boxes. Nothing else in sight. I feel invisible. I'm not myself. Why don't you build something with your tools? Kari believes we are happiest when we are building with our own hands. My brother is right. I cut and rearrange the cardboard boxes to build my old neighborhood, and then I use markers to draw the people I miss so much. I imagine what they are feeling in lockdown. I put old rusty cans all over my cardboard world and draw germs on them. Ah, that's a good idea, says Kari again. He joins me with my rugby ball. Let's do something about these germs. I I start throwing my rugby ball to knock them down. I feel empowered. I imagine myself defeating the germs to free my friends in our old neighborhood. This is brilliant, says Kari. He pulls out his phone and sends pictures of my game to our old friends. They want to play as well. We create a group, a chat group to share our best throws. Laughing hard, I say, everybody needs to do this. It feels so good. It feels even better because we are doing it with friends, says Kari. I realize I'm not alone. I feel like myself. Finding that warm and fuzzy feeling, I create a video challenging more friends and former classmates to join our game. Kate from North America. My brothers are doing homework. Mom is teaching her high school classes. Everybody is staring at screens. I am bored, bored, bored. I try to follow my classes on the computer. It's hard. I miss playing outside with my friends and I miss dancing. It feels like my skin is crawling in it antsy. I wish it, time could go faster. Maybe I could speed it up if I run really fast. Oops, I disturbed everyone again. Just stop moving, screams my gain. Oh, not again, yells Peter. I'm getting on everybody's nerves. I'm not myself. Kate, Kate, could you try to read quietly for a while? I sit still for two minutes and my legs start twitching. I'm ready to burst out. I'm going to get in trouble again. All of a sudden, the phone rings. I run in answer. It's Mrs. Robinson who inquires, How are you, Quake? I sneak underneath the table with tears welling in my eyes. I whisper, I'm being bad. I can't sit still. Mrs. Robinson reminds me that at school, we use yoga to calm down in the morning. She suggests that I practice when waking up and promises to send her videos to mom. A week later, I am leading my family through Mrs. Robinson's yoga. I'm finishing with the tree pose. I'm really good at this. Even my brothers can see it. Thank you, Kate, Mom says. What a wonderful way to start the day. 
I feel helpful. I feel wanted. I feel like myself. Finding that warm and fuzzy feeling keeps me calm and focused all day. Bo, from Asia. My parents are both doctors. They are needed at the hospital, so my aunt is staying with me. When she arrived, I refused to say goodbye to my parents and hid in my room. Now I miss them. I miss the experience that we would do together tinkering and 3D printing. My aunt only loves to watch television. I'm ashamed of myself. When my aunt spoke to my parents today, I spied a nasty rash on my mom and dad's face. They are wearing medical masks all the time. I wish I could help them somehow. I have always loved science and technology, so I enjoy the virtual classroom with Mr. Chun. His lessons are the highlight of my day and the only time I feel like myself, but today I am quiet when he proposes a project. My friend Jin realizes something is wrong. I would usually be excited. He calls me after class and asks, How are things going, Bo? I convince my, confess my behavior and worries for my parents. I wonder how I can help. You still have that 3D printer at home, asked Jin. Why don't we use it for the project? Mom and Dad call, I answer. Look, Bo, she says, as they model the brand new headpiece that Jin and I collaborated to design and 3D print for them. Dad asks, do you think you and Jin can make some for our doctor and nurse friends? With pride, I answer, of course. Mom and Dad are beaming. I am very busy, feeling more like myself. Finding that warm and fuzzy feeling, I get ready to start 3D printing more headpieces. Gabby from Latin America. We are home all the time. It is not easy. I try to keep up with distance learning as my teacher calls our lessons on the computer, but sometimes I get distracted. Nico and Felipe, my little twin brothers, cry a lot. It drives Papi nuts. He gets angry and yells at Mama. I hate it when this happens. Mama says that Papi is worried about his business. She tries to comfort me with everything will go back to normal and we will be fine once this is over. I hope she is right. My family is not itself anymore. The next day, I'm distracted when my grandfather calls. I'm fearful he will hear Nico and Felipe crying about Bobby's loud voice in the background. Grandpa asks, What's wrong, Gabby? I can't stop myself. I tell him that my parents are stressed and fighting a lot. The twins cry constantly. I don't bake with my dad anymore. I miss the smell. I miss walking under the jacaranda trees with him while I share my school stories and eat our freshly baked cookies. Grandfather says, Gabby, I have an idea for your class project. Why don't we write the story of how these days have been for you? I'll help you with writing and you can do the drawing. Your grandfather called. Mama says, she hugs me and whispers, your dad and I would love to see your story. I finish reading it to them and they sit in silence. Papi leans over to Mama and says, I'm sorry and gives her a big hug. He turns to me with a large smile on his face. Gabby, why don't we bake cookies? Singing and baking, I feel like myself again. Finding that warm and fuzzy feeling, I decide to share my story with my teacher and classmates in my next lesson. Alessandro from Europe. It's been a couple of weeks since we started learning from home. My teacher made sure I brought my books and things home, including my violin, before the school closed. It's been hard. Grandma has been very sick. I can see my parents are worried. I'm worried as well. We can't talk or visit Grandma. I'm very sad. I'm struggling to express my feelings and don't want to bother my parents. We live in a small apartment, but I still feel very alone. I'm not myself. We get that call that Grandma is gone, just like that. I didn't get to say goodbye. Mrs. Rossi, our next door neighbor, calls. I heard the news, Alessandro. I'm so sorry. I stay quiet, not sure what to say. Mrs. Rossi continues. Don't forget your violin, Alessandro. In these times, you can express yourself through the music. I mumble, I thank you for the call and hang up. I look at my violin for a long time and finally picking it up. Playing, I start to feel relief as tears roll down my cheeks. My parents are watching me, smiling. My parents tell me that Grandma always loved to hear my music and that I should go out on our balcony to play for the sky. I step out early evening and start playing. To my surprise, other neighbors 
come out and play their instruments and people begin to sing. I feel like myself again, finding that warm and fuzzy feeling. I hope grandma can hear my music.